Hello, this is going to be, I believe this is probably going to be the last of my response videos to that guy on Twitter. Anybody who's talked to flat earthers know the frustration in trying to get them to present anything other than memes and whatever. As I've stated before, I think that I've pretty much given up trying to talk to these individuals. Many people have already tried to point out the inconsistencies on a flat earth. All you have to do is look up the angle to Polaris problem and how it doesn't work on a flat earth, but that same problem exists for everything. If I were to try to tell these flat earthers just how silly their model is, I'd point out the inconsistencies of just a single observation that you could make, which is the elevation angle to the sun when the sun passes your local meridian. I had a comment recently from a flat earther that said Stellarium is a piece of garbage, etc. And incredulity was just oozing from that flat earther. So I decided I was going to switch to this other tool as well, SunCalc. And if that's not enough, you can go with timeanddate.com. You can do the math yourself like I showed in the last video that for some reason flat earthers don't think is any indication of any kind that we really live on a spherical earth but I digress I'm looking at this tool called suncalc.org so I chose a time that is roughly eight months from now that should give flat earthers plenty of time to think about it and promptly forget about it, which they probably will. But this is something that we are able to predict. According to SunCalc, at a coordinate of 45.0 degrees north and 75.0 degrees west, on the 15th of October of this year at 12.45 p.m. UTC minus 4, at that geolocation, we are expecting the sun to be at an altitude of 36.14 degrees up and an azimuth of basically due south. So at that particular moment, the sun is just passing the local meridian. And I used the same formulas that I showed in the last video to compute the expected sun's altitude for every degree of latitude from 5 degrees south to 70 or rather 69 degrees north. According to the math, which I have shown and that anybody can follow to confirm whether it is accurate or not, that same formula is predicting an altitude of 36.25 degrees and an azimuth of 180.002 degrees. All of the ones that are yellow I have done already and I'm going to show them in a picture in picture right about here. And so now we can test the idea of how high is the sky on a flat earth. The math should not be at all complicated. I haven't seen a flat earther deny the 60 nautical miles per degree rule. So we can apply that. I'll convert 60 nautical miles to kilometers. So in other words, every degree that the sun makes in the sky, I will assume that I have traveled 111 kilometers further north. So for example, between these two, 81.25 and 79.25, that's two degrees, I would expect that to be 222.24 kilometers, distance between these two points. I'm going to make this spreadsheet available. Anybody can look at it at their leisure. I calculated the distance to the GP. This should be the number of degrees to the GP. This should be the distance to the GP. I used an online triangle calculator. If this is the GP and the sun is directly overhead, that should be at a 90 degree angle. So we have one angle. We have the distance between the GP and a specific observer. And then the other angle to the sun forms a second angle. So now we have two angles and one side, a standard 
standard online triangle calculator, which is over here, is able to measure the height of the sun above this flat earth. And I have used the formulas that this site showed in order to calculate the height of the sun and that's in this column here. I've also used an alternate method, which is just a simple multiplication of the distance between the GP and the observer multiplied by the tangent of the angle from the observer to the sun, and that produces the same value. So very simple math. Next, I made this nice little diagram. I just went into GIMP and I draw a horizontal line here that represents the ground. I went and chose a specific point on this line which would represent the observer at either the equator, 15 degrees north, 30, 45, or 60. I made the image 1920 by 1080, so I wanted something a little bit narrower than that. I went 1800 pixels wide. I added a 15 degree offset to the latitude and all of this essentially calculates the x axis pixel from 150 to 1260. In GIMP a straight line to the right was 0 degrees, 90 degrees was straight up above that point and 180 degrees was directly to the left of that point. So I subtracted the expected altitude from 180 degrees so I could draw a straight line in GIMP for that specific angle. And this is yet another diagram that shows exactly what we would expect if the Earth was flat. With only two observers, one at the equator and one at 30 degrees north, the Sun would have to intersect at this point in space. Between 15 degrees and 45 degrees, it would have to intersect at this separate point in space and 45 and 60. Between 15 and 30 degrees north, it would have to be over here or over here or over here. In other words, there is no definable point in space where any specific sun can reside and now flat earthers have to come up with asinine excuses like a personal sun or it's just a projection in the sky, don't worry about it, or some other stupid thing like that. So the only thing I have left to say is bring up a reference to Led Zeppelin's The Crunch. And all you have to do is replace the word bridge for sun. Yeah, that's going to be it for me. I think that I've beaten this dead horse enough. And this is going to be the last video in this little mini series of mine. I thank everybody for watching. I've got several other videos on the go. I think that you will like those much better than you liked this series. So once again, thumbs up, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. You know what to do. And with that, I'm going to see you again very soon. Bye for now.